Today, I'm gonna to show you everything I've been doing over the past year to train my dog Inertia to walk on leash. I'm Zach George. I train dogs. This is my new dog, and I'm gonna show you how I train her from day one. Things definitely won't always go smoothly. You can start from the beginning, or you can pick up anywhere. Subscribe and hit the bell notification so you never miss an episode. When you put into motion an approach based on love and respect, your results will forever remain in motion. This is Inertia. Welcome to the Dog Training Experience. Leash training can be one of the toughest things to train a dog. Getting a training box sent to you based on your dog's specific age is a way to keep you motivated, to keep you on track, so that your dog is awesome in no time. For example, this is the six month box, and let me show you how this works. You get a surprisingly detailed training guide. For a six month old dog, it's time to start refining and getting those leash skills looking better. In addition to the training guide, they send you training supplies too. You'll find that you can never have enough leashes lying around. The feeling of this is really dynamic. I think Inertia is going to be like, what is that alien material? They sent honey coconut scented shampoo and it smells exactly like that. Only your dog can hear this apparently. All right, let's see if she can hear it. Oh my gosh. So it's like a silent squeaker to us, but they get the satisfaction of hearing a squeak. Go get it. Oh yeah, she's gonna love that. These are turkey tendon strips. Really interesting texture on these. You definitely need good training treats if you're gonna train a dog. And because Inertia is over a year, she gets an adult box too. This came in her adult box. Check this out. She's gonna go crazy over this. Oh my God. This is like extreme tug of war, look at this. But when you just have something new and random that you would never think to get in a million years and you find that your dog just goes crazy over it, that's really a way to energize your training. Enter my special code Zach to get 50% off of your first pup box when you sign up for a three, six or 12 month plan at pupbox.com slash Zach. I'll have that link and discount code in the description of this video. Leash walking. For many people, it's one of the most challenging things about training their dog. Leash walking typically takes many months to master, but there are a lot of variables involved. Like how consistent you are, how energetic your particular dog is, and your pre-existing communication with one another. First, a very important piece of advice. If you have a high energy dog, it's critical that you get their energy out of them just prior to doing these leash training sessions. It's these high energy dogs that we've selected for over the centuries and their energy made them very valuable to us. So we have to be fair to those genetic tendencies by giving them an outlet for all of that energy before these leash walking sessions. In other words, walking nicely on leash for energetic dogs is a pretty unnatural thing. If you're at a plateau on this and you've been struggling with this, with your own dog, you might find that exercising them just before a leash training session might make all of the difference. Now, you'll also wanna make sure that your dog has a basic grasp of the basics, like leave it and look at me, and that you've taken the time to get them comfortable with wearing their collar and their harness. If your dog doesn't know a lot of these basic things, you can start at the beginning of this series and maybe pick up a copy of both of my books too to learn how to train them in detail. Once you have those basics down, you're ready to start with leash walking training. One of the big secrets about dog training is that whenever you're teaching your dog something new, do it in an easy environment, like inside of your house. You'll remember with Inertia, her first leash walking lessons were all indoors. That's because it was a lot easier for her to listen in an indoor familiar environment than it would be for a dog to listen in an outdoor environment of virtually any kind. If you've tried leash walking outside before, it's possible that you've encountered a dog who is far too distracted by their surroundings. I mean, think about it. They see you all of the time, but being outside is far more stimulating because so many things are different and new and dogs are really curious by nature. So making it easy for your dog to succeed, especially early on, is going to make things way smoother. During my first leash walking lessons with Inertia, we would practice walking around inside the house while she was on leash. So I like to do these early lessons, which are basically just look at me while moving. I do that so I can verify that my dog is paying attention to me. At first, there's literally nothing wrong with holding up a treat just like this if you've gotta get your dog to voluntarily stay with you and stay on a loose leash. And the logic here behind using treats for this is that you're keeping your dog in a really upbeat frame of mind. See that? Very good. At first you might find it really natural to kind of manipulate them and jerk them around a bit with the leash and their harness or collar, but that doesn't really teach them. We have to really show them how to voluntarily go through the motions if we're concerned with long-term success. 
And the reason I like to have the dog look at me is to verify that I have their attention when I ask for it. So in other words, the goal of these early sessions are to get them to take sometimes just one or two or three steps in a row without having any tension on the leash. Take it any way that you can get it. You'll find that your dog seems to learn at a much faster rate when they're eagerly paying attention to you. Once I really felt that inertia was starting to grasp this concept of look at me while we walked, then I would start to ask her to change directions more randomly. While you're practicing, if you think your dog is about to start speeding up or pulling, stop immediately or even start walking in the opposite direction in order to preempt the pulling. Doing this consistently will teach your dog that if they pull on their leash, they're not gonna get to go where they wanna go. Remember, the best time to address a behavior that you don't want to see is before it occurs, not after it occurs. This applies to leash walking as well as virtually any other bad habit you can think of too. In the beginning, when you're introducing this concept, really focus on a couple of weeks of doing this a few times a day in like five minute increments. I do wanna talk briefly about using corrective collars like choke chains, prong collars, or even electric collars. I don't recommend using any aversive tools like these when training dogs because there are too many side effects and it could actually make training take even longer. I mean, let's take a common example where you might be tempted to physically correct with one of these collars. Say your dog is reacting to another dog on a walk and barking vigorously. You may inadvertently be creating a scenario where your dog learns to associate the harsh correction with the presence of other dogs on a walk. So this could further amplify issues like that. I'm not saying people who use these collars are in any way bad people. I'm just saying that there might be more benefits to using a different approach. Another thing is that dogs are pretty smart. So they come to know when that special collar is around the neck versus when it's not. So if they're wearing a normal collar or harness, then you're likely to see the behavior come right back. So essentially those collars can act as a patch and we all know that patches can eventually fail. So I recommend actually taking the time to teach your dog and really walk through the motions of how to walk nicely on leash over an extended period of time while being very patient. That way you'll end up with a dog who listens to you regardless of the type of collar or harness they're wearing. Okay, so once your dog is walking well while indoors, you're ready to start taking your training outdoors. But this is a big step. Now don't expect to just take off down the street and have a perfectly well-behaved dog. As we discussed before, moving from inside to outside involves a lot of training challenges. Since the outdoors is so tempting and distracting for most dogs, it's a good idea to give your dog some time to observe, sniff around a little bit, and take in that new environment before you ask them to start focusing on the training lesson at hand. So be tolerant of leash pulling and things like that during this adjustment period. Ideally, at first with these outdoor lessons, you'll wanna stay very close to your home and practice over a short distance, like walking in circles in your driveway or back and forth on the sidewalk just in front of your house or apartment. The first time I did a leash training session with inertia outside, we just stayed on a little patch of pavement in our backyard. And remember, your mindset when you're doing a training walk like this must be different than a more casual walk. For example, during a training walk, you don't have a destination in mind. You're not even trying to travel any significant distance, especially early on. You just want to be able to get your dog to take 10 steps in a row without pulling. So be willing to cover the same stretch of ground over and over when you're training your dog in the beginning. If you're trying to get somewhere specific or if you're trying to go a certain distance to exercise your dog, you're much more likely to feel frustrated during your walk. So let your training walks be 100% focused on leash training. And remember to be tolerant when you're doing other types of walks like potty breaks or free walks, which I talked about in a recent video. This will really help you stay consistent and get the fastest results possible. As you walk, reward your dog big time when there's no tension on the leash and give them a big jackpot reward every time they offer their attention to you. Ideally, you'll get good at reading your dog and you'll be able to detect when pulling is about to occur. So if you notice that your dog is picking up the pace or you're approaching something really exciting, this is your cue to slow down or change directions proactively. And again, I wanna be very clear about that distinction between a training walk and say a socialization experience. So for example, when Inertia was a puppy, I would take her down to the French Quarter here in New Orleans just to give her exposure. And the priority in those sessions was just to show her things, not to teach her to walk nicely on a leash while in public. We have to work up to those things, especially with young dogs. And so it's always important to be mindful of what is surrounding you and your dog when you're asking them to listen to you. If it's a brand new place with new smells, sights, and sounds, then you have to be very tolerant of that with an inexperienced dog and just let them check things out. 
And remember, by new environments, I'm not necessarily talking about a place miles from home. Just another 20 feet down the street may have all sorts of new things that get your dog's attention. So be understanding every time you take your dog to a new place, even if you think it's not really that new. When you do encounter a genuine distraction in the real world, like another dog or a squirrel, Look at this as a golden training opportunity. Rather than force the issue and get very close to those things that you know your dog is likely to be heavily distracted by, create a little bit of distance. When you think that you've created enough distance, you can test your dog for compliance by asking them to do something that they're usually really good at, like sit, for example. And when you find that spot and your dog does sit, that might be your working distance from the distraction. For some dogs, that working distance might be a half a mile away, and that's okay. If your dog is too distracted to give you their attention, try being a little bit more interesting. This can work sometimes with some dogs, or even putting a treat at their nose to let them know that you have something good. Another thing you can do is to walk backwards to encourage your dog to follow you. That's a bit more natural for some dogs. Now, there's no doubt that training polite leash walking to a lot of dogs is definitely easier said than done. It's unrealistic to resolve this overnight, but let your focus be on good leash skills trending better and better. In the meantime, as you're working on this, you might wonder how consistent you need to be. In many areas of training, it's very reasonable to be 90 plus percent consistent with your training. For example, if you're training leave it, you can with 90% likelihood cover up the treat before your dog gets to it, right? But we must build in exceptions for leash training. For example, let's say you've got a five month old dog who doesn't have the best leash walking skills. You must be tolerant of natural behavior to a point. Dogs walk more quickly than we do. They're curious. And this idea of walking slowly while attached with a leash is very foreign to them. So in cases where you really have to get somewhere, if you're walking your dog and you've got to take them to the vet, for example, you'll just have to be tolerant of the leash pulling for now. But just be sure to set aside lots of time of leash walking practice when you're able to focus exclusively on your dog. Keep the big picture in mind, especially during your dog's first couple of years. If your dog was unruly on leash 90% of the time when you first started, and now they're only terrible on leash 50% of the time, then remind yourself you're still headed in the right direction. Check out Pup Box 2. You'll get 50% off of your first Pup Box when you enter discount code Zach. I'll have a direct link and discount code in the description below. Subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram too. Get both of my books. They're great companions to these videos. All of the links will be below and we'll see you next time.